Hey everybody, I'm Tony Varela. It's my favorite day of the week, September 18th, 2019. You're watching Comic TV. This is my co-host Yogi. Let's do this. Alright! Got a really nice comic day. Not too hard on the wallet either, but uh, I had some really big issues come out today. A uh, few uh, independents, and I also had a really big comic haul to show you. Kind of mixed it in with the other titles, uh, but I went to about five places during the week. I found that I was uh, uh, getting a few gaps, little holes in my, uh, my uh, collection, so I wanted to fill those in before it got too late and too expensive. So uh, I'll get it started right now. I'll mix some of them in, some of them I'll show you at the end. But starting off, we got Vampirella number three. And I've really been enjoying this title. I have always bought this book as a cover buy. But uh, Priest is doing a great job in the writing, and uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this dude's name right, but Ergun Gunduz. Uh, this is the J. Scott Campbell cover, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but I also had to get this 1 in 15 art germ cover. And there is a virgin variant of this as well, but uh, I said good enough. But uh, also, uh, last issue, this number two, uh, they had a variant with all the, uh, these nuns are all uh, vampire or uh, werewolf killers, so they're pretty cool. And I don't know if they've been, appeared in this issue before, but I definitely like the, uh, the group and uh, definitely enjoying how Priest is building up her collection or rogues gallery, if you will. A couple others I got, I got this one for $3, really nice buy on that Jenny Friesen variant. And I got a few more to show you. That one is $3 as well. Now these next two cost about uh, $12, which is still a, a really decent price. But I'm trying to fill in as many gaps as I can of these Vampirella Friesens. And there's really only one major one that I've left to get. So I'm happy about that. Now Friesen also does a gang of Red Sonia care, uh, uh, covers. And uh, Perillo and Matina both cut their teeth on those covers and Perillo's back doing covers for Red Sonia and they've all been sick so far and this is Birth of the She-Devil and I believe this is either the last of the run or the last of the series but Perillo did a fabulous job on that cover I absolutely love it one of these days I'm gonna get around to doing a video just on Perillo's I've got some really nice issues and autographs from his as well and uh, so coming up from Image Comics, we got Blade Runner number three. And I've really been enjoying this title. And supposedly these comics are going to be canon for future movies as well. So it'll definitely tie into the Blade Runner universe. We got Michael Green doing a great job on the writing. Mike Johnson helping out as well. And we got a uh, Bush Geist cover D on that. And there's a color version of that as well. But that black and white, I usually don't like those. But that one really popped. So I snagged it. Ah. One of the biggest new titles going right now from Boom Studios, Once in Future number two. Uh, that one is written by Kieran Gillen, and Dan Moore is doing a great job on the art as well. Big time book, I hope you're picking that up. Hope you're getting some of those second, third, fourth printings. Uh, I did manage to get, uh, I believe this is the fourth printing, but I really like that. And of all the later printings, I probably like that one of the best. There's the, uh, the red, uh, variant as well that I have not seen uh, in person anyway. Definitely there on eBay and there. One a pretty penny for it. So from Valiant Comics, I've really been enjoying this title as well. I haven't been hearing a lot of buzz about it and I don't know why because the art is great, the story is great, I'm really loving it. This is number three of five. Claymore is doing the writing on it. We got fan of Fernando Dagnino doing the art and that is the Yannick Corbaz cover C. A lot of nice covers on that one today. I had a hard time deciding, but there was three different ones that I thought about getting. <clears throat> so this is also an image title. Uh, this is Rumble, and John Arcudi does the writing for three different stories in there. And then we got different artists. We got Horley, we got Stick, and we got the cover artist doing the last story, Gerard Zaffino. And Zaffino does some badass work. Ain't that right, buddy? You're sitting so good today. Oh, man. All right, let me see if I can move this deck. And uh, then we'll get with our Marvel titles. So uh, Absolute Carnage has been absolutely awesome. Danny Cates killing it every week on the writing. And this is number three of five. Ryan Stegman's over from Venom doing the uh, art on that. And Stegman just keeps stepping his game up 
every issue he does it just gets better and better so that's the stegman variant and then i also got the peppy laraz young guns variant and that is the venomized hulk and man does that cover look badass and if you're not following uh laraz and silva on those house and powers of x titles you're really missing out and another one of those books that i found throughout the week was this uh second printing of the number 17 venom with sleeper on the cover and sleepers really becoming a big part of that story so i hope you're on that title because it's sick we got guardians of the galaxy number nine also written by donny cates corey smith doing a right a nice job on the art and that is a patrick zercher cover spider-man number one some tragic events going on in this book so uh I hope you grabbed yourself a copy because this book might be heating up. Now, I'm sure they did a large print run on this, but definitely a new character and a death. So, J.J. Uh, Abrams and Henry Abrams are both doing the writing on this. And we got Sarah Pichelli doing a really beautiful job on the art. This is the Chip Kid die cut cover. I also got the Ramos Party variant, Party on Wayne. And I also got a couple of these Gabrielle Delato 1 in 50 variants, and those are absolutely beautiful. So I snagged two of those. I love me some Delato, but I tell you what, there's a few artists that are kind of passing him up. I think Perillo, Matina, and this new young buck on the block, Ryan Brown, is just killing it, Yogi. Woo! He's killing it. So, uh, Dead Man Logan. This one, along with uh, Old Man Hawkeye, I've been trying to uh, unsub from these, but they're just good every week. Edward Sohn do, does a great job on the writing, and Mike Henderson's art is pretty cool, too. Only thing I don't like about it is these Declan Shalby covers. Declan Shoddy. House of X. If you're not on this title, bro, if you're not on, what's wrong with you, dude? You need to go check yourself, because this House of X, number five of six, is awesome. Jonathan Hickman is uh, regained my X-Men love, and I'm so happy about it. And there's a ton of people that are saying the same exact thing. The X-Men are back. Pepe Larraz is doing this, this issue. R.B. Silva has do, been doing the other one. And this is a Larraz cover as well. And there was a virgin version of this cover, but I didn't want to plop down the 50 bucks. That was a one in 100. So uh, this is another issue I uh, managed to snatch up. The uh, connecting covers have been super hot, so I managed to get uh, this one completed, and uh, I managed to get another set as well. So, uh, boom. These have really been popping on eBay, so I hope you're just jumping on those. Uh, there is a connecting cover that started today from Nakayama. However, I did not see that on the shelf at either of the comic stores I went to, so hopefully I'll come across that one, but if not, of the connecting covers, the Nakayama, it probably was the least cool. So from DC, we got Aquaman number 52. Kelly Sue DeConnick's been doing a great job on the writing. And Robson Roca's art is excellent as well. Not only that, we've been getting an awesome Josh Middleton cover almost every week. And that one is dope as well. So uh, Tom King, he's given us a couple of good issues. But uh, last week, uh, n absolutely nothing going on. It's like playtime on the beach with Batman and his Magnum P.I. mustache. It's a bunch of crap. But the Clay Man art side was super dope. And he is back again doing the art. So uh, if it's a sh uh, crappy story, at least we'll get to see that Clay Man art. And that is a Clay Man cover as well. Tony Daniel did the other cover. But uh, I think Man beat him out this week. Last of the comics that I got for this week, uh, Justice League number 32, and this title's been really enjoyable. Uh, Scott Snyder doing the writing on that, and we got uh, James Tenney in the fourth as well, and uh, that is a uh, Oliver Copiel cover, and I really like that cover. Uh, a couple that, uh, that didn't make the cut today, we got Lethal Protectors number two that came out. We have a uh, one in 25 variant, the uh, Codex variant from Greg Land of the Red Goblin. I was really hoping to grab that one today, but I just, I did not see it. And my comic store said they didn't get it. So I know they ordered enough books, so I'm not sure what happened. They had some that were damaged, so maybe that was it. 
So uh, a couple of more blanks that I filled in. I missed the watcher last uh, last week, so that's the number two issue. And that's a really nice cover. And I also like this J. Anacleto version of that. Next week, there's a really awesome cover. Uh, big old demon on the cover of it. It looks super awesome. So I hope you're going to grab that cover. And that one's been heating up a little bit, getting some buzz. So uh, check it out. The story's really good. The art's just okay, but it might have some legs. We'll see. So uh, I got a, only a few of those Spawn 300 covers because I know the print run's going to be high. So I don't know about it much long-term spec, but I, I wanted that uh, Spider-Man 300 homage cover. And I hadn't really seen any, and I finally rounded one up some. I'm pretty stoked about that. And then uh, I had traded off this Spider-Woman issue to my friend Sterling and I was really, really missing it. So I managed to recoup that. That's from Alex Maleev and that is a super sexy Spider-Woman cover, as is this one. Now the condition is absolute trash, but I only played two bucks for this issue. And uh, if you can get that one in good condition, it's heating up because it's of course the bonding situation, but uh, Spider-Woman looking super sexy on that cover. I got this one for four bucks, and this is an Arthur Sudiam Zombies cover. Those are definitely hot, and She-Hulk with the new T television series coming up is super hot, and this is the number one of her second series, and that one is quite hot as well. And uh, Greg Land drew this Guardians of the Galaxy Gamora cover, and uh, Greg Land also had a four pack of uh, Spider-Verse issues that he's doing that look absolutely beautiful especially the cover D. Those started on sale at noon today, so uh, hopefully you can jump on that and still grab some copies. Uh, you don't have to buy all of them to get the cover D, although the cover D is a little pricey, but man, that cover D is awesome. The cover A is awesome too. That one's only 15 bucks, so check it out. And uh, just a couple more. I got this Venom number one red foil cover. I think I paid eight bucks for that, but every time I see that at a decent price, I snatch it up. And then uh, we got Lethal Protector number two of six. And uh, that one's the same picture as the one on my comic box, so I had to snatch that one up again too. So, uh, hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, be sure to tell your friends, tell your kids, tell your wife to join us every Wednesday for all the hottest comics and variant covers that come out. Uh, also, remember to look down, like, and subscribe. The more you like my channel, the more it shows up when people are searching for new comics and things like that. So help me out, like, subscribe, all that, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.